Hey guys, what's going on? IAQ Josh here, and in this video, I am going to be talking about the must have key essential items if you plan on being a mold assessment contractor. So let's get to it. Alright guys, so one of the most important, if not the single most important tools you are going to want to have on every mold assessment is going to be a high powered or high lumen flashlight. This does not need to be extreme, we don't need to get into the 1000, 2000, 3000 range, but realistically anything from about a 600 lumen flashlight on up is going to be helpful at seeing a lot of the elements that we otherwise could not see. Alright guys, next up we are going to be talking moisture meters. One of my favorites is going to be this Tramex Moisture Encounter. We also have a Delmhurst. Difference between these two is this is going to be a pinless style moisture meter, whereas this is going to be a pin style moisture meter. Now if you're saying to yourself, that's great, but I don't want to really carry around two different instruments, that's fine. Pertimeter has been kind enough to create a dual function moisture meter, as well as many other brands out there. So just make sure that you are equipped with a pin style as well as a pinless style moisture meter whether you want to go separate items or one unit that does both you're going to need it to identify the moisture concentrations in building materials all right now that we know what we need to be able to identify moisture concentrations in building materials let's talk about identifying moisture content within the air this right here is a thermo hygrometer and what this is going to be able to do is tell us and report on data such as temperature, relative humidity, GPP or grains per pound if you're in the water damage recovery industry, as well as dew point temperature. Now dew point temperature is a very important element if you're going to be doing any sort of building science or even just run of the mill mold investigations inside of a property to identify what areas are going to be more subject to seeing mold development from condensation. So make sure you equip yourself with a good thermo hygrometer. Make sure you get one that is accurate and has the ability to be recalibrated, whether you can do it yourself or send it out to the factory. All right, so next up is gonna be our basic hand tools. You're gonna to wanna to get yourself a flathead screwdriver, a Phillips head screwdriver, as well as probably a little hex style set. You can go a little bit fancier and get yourself a rotating screwdriver, which again, makes your life a little bit easier in the field. One tool that I've fallen in love with here over the past couple years is gonna be the Gator Grip. Gator Grip will allow me to connect to almost any style bolt head that I'm gonna be dealing with. This is especially important when I'm dealing with air handler cabinets and I've got your standard size little bolts that screw into the cabinet or I've got your larger bolts clearly somebody put on because they stripped out the smaller one. Maybe a Gator Grip, if nothing else, get yourself a varying size bolt set to be able to help you get into the air handler cabinets and anything else you might run into. All right, so let's talk about a couple of different sampling options when it comes to actually, quote unquote, testing for mold. We've got our swab, which is gonna be a surface style sampling media, and we've got our tape lift, which is gonna be another surface style sampling media. Both of these will kinda do the same job depending on a couple of unique situations. For example, if you've got a very wet substrate or surface, your tape lift is not gonna be very useful at coming in contact and potentially pulling off a representative amount of media on the surface. However, your swab sample works especially great in let's say those air handler cabinets, areas that are prone to high humidity and very damp environments. Whatever your choice is here, personally I carry both just for that reason that I just described, but make sure that you are carrying surface sampling media to every mold assessment investigation that you may encounter because there's going to be those incidents where we need to either identify the genus which is going to be the type or category of mold or simply put we want to either confirm or deny the presence of mold or fungi even being present to begin with. Now, if you are to be performing any sort of sampling at the projects you undertake, we wanna make sure that we have a good set of gloves that we're utilizing. In this case, I'm using disposable nitro gloves, powder free, they're about a dime a dozen. I buy them in cases, I wear them, I collect my samples using aseptic techniques, and then I basically take them 
throw them away at the end of the project. If I'm doing a lot of sampling, I might actually toss them in between samples, especially if I'm working in a real gruesome environment and then I go to a more cleaner environment. That's especially when you wanna be tearing them off, putting on new ones. You cannot have enough gloves. Okay, so continuing along on the topic of sampling, we've got an air sampling pump. In this case, this is a bio aerosol sampling pump and this is a cassette which commonly sits on top of here. And this unit will run for anywhere from one, two, five, or 10 minutes with the push of a button. Now, these are gonna be especially useful if we are trying to gain information as to what mold or fungi might be present within the indoor air quality. We're specifically looking at spores and the hyphal fragments from mold. And this will tell us, number one, what types of mold are present at the genus level again we're not getting down to the specific species but the group of mold that might be present as well as the actual quantities now customarily you would collect air samples within environments that doesn't have visible mold on surfaces because quite frankly if you can see it there not a real big value add in collecting an air sample in there there will be folks out there that disagree with that statement great drop a comment below and let me know why also a lot of times you would collect an outdoor sample to be used as a background or what some would call a control sample while not a must during mold investigations and mold assessments there are many that will argue that this here guy is needed and should be part of the must have i will put it in the category of you should have it it's great to have it in the vehicle you may or may not need it on a project depending on what you're running into needless to say i always have this with me i always have it ready and i always have additional sampling cassettes ready to go all right so that about sums up the mold assessment contractor consultant must haves however let's take another minute or two to talk about some other tools of the trade that i can see being very helpful in your day-to-day -day diagnostic and assessments so continuing along the conversation of talking about identifying moisture concentrations within building materials one tool that a lot of folks like to talk about is the thermal imaging or infrared imaging camera. General disclaimer, this device does not see moisture. It doesn't, it doesn't see moisture. It cannot tell you what's wet and what's dry. However, one thing it does provide data on is differences in surface temperature. So when I take this device and point it at a given wall, if one side of the wall is wet or damp and one side of the wall is dry, in a lot of instances, asterisk there's factors at play here but in a lot of instances i will see a nice color gradient difference between the left side and the right side of the wall now where this is especially helpful is it is wonderful at a time saving tactic rather than going around and sticking a bunch of holes or even using my non-penetrating meter and taking a bunch of random moisture readings this device can exponentially speed up the inspection and assessment time frame what it can also do is it can allow you to look at out of reach areas for example a taller ceiling to identify what the likelihood of that containing moisture might be now even when we do identify some concerning areas or what we would commonly refer to as a thermal anomaly we still need to get up there and do a physical check on that material with a moisture meter so whether you want to actually climb into the attic to check above this taller ceiling or equip yourself with something like this which is going to be an extension for a moisture meter this can be especially helpful because as you see i can go up to these taller areas so just understanding what you might run into in your day-to-day -day inspections and basically equipping yourself with tools as you grow thermal imaging can be a useful tool while not a must-have this can definitely be a time-saving tool all right so next up we are going to be discussing the boroscope so if you've ever been to the doctor you might have heard some discussion or even seen them talking about some tools that they'll use called an endoscope where they actually take a scope they can put it in different you know openings in your body and be able to go inside and take a look around now, sort of the same idea here, but obviously we are not going inside the human body. We are utilizing a device like this, which has a nice lit up screen. Sometimes it'll have a flashlight like this. 
and we can actually take the end of this scope, slide this in an otherwise hard to reach or inaccessible area, such as alongside a dishwasher in a kitchen, and this will give us a nice little visual of what's going on behind said cabinet, said vanity, said dishwasher. This can be a very helpful tool. Quite frankly, I use this on probably 30 to 40% of my investigations, so it's definitely a tool that I like to keep in the toolbox. So get yourself a boroscope if you have run into those hard to reach or inaccessible areas this will prove to be useful. Last, but certainly not least, is going to be a handheld manometer. I use this device in just about every assessment that I do. That's right, just about every assessment that I do. In the past, I did not. However, if we only knew then what we know now, and I'm telling you, so take notes and jump ahead, in so many instances when I'm performing a mold investigation, and I have pockets of humidity or telltale signs of issues is gonna be, oh, my husband's office is always warmer than the rest of the house or the playroom where my wife and my daughter spend most of their time is always ice cold compared to the rest of the house. That is where a handheld manometer can help you discern between areas that are under maybe a negative pressure differential or a positive pressure differential. This can be especially helpful. We've probably always heard the saying pollutant pathways. Well, if we don't know which way the airflow is moving inside of a home, it's a little bit difficult to identify these pollutant pathways. So one tool that I now swear by is going to be a handheld manometer. Do yourself a favor, do some research, look it up. The mold remediation industry has been using it for years to ensure that our containment areas are under a negative pressure differential, so we're not cross-contaminating. However, we've now found multiple uses for this on the investigative side. All right, ladies and gentlemen, and just like that, that is a wrap. I do hope that you found some informative tidbits of information within this video. If you did, please, I encourage you and greatly appreciate you subscribing to my channel. Go ahead and tap that little bell as well so you can receive notifications. If you have any questions, comments, or even challenges that you want to further discuss, please drop a comment within the comments section below. Last but not least, I will place a link to all of these tools within the description section below. So if you would like to purchase any or all of the tools to model after IAQ Josh for whatever reason, you are welcome to do so. General disclaimer. I am not affiliated with any of the companies mentioned. These are just tools that I use that I have personal preference toward. So all of the links below do not have any monetary gain for me. These are simply providing links where you may purchase these tools. I cannot even promise you that these are going to be the best prices for these tools, but nonetheless, it will show you what I have. Thank you so much for watching and joining me, and I will see y'all next time.